you take him to another planet, to a mothership? How they communicate with them? Can you tell me what they look like? Can you tell me how many of them there were? Were you, were you getting food? But the teachers are alive. They're not books. They are the very living essences of nature itself. What a strange person. Unbelievably powerful supercomputer is running our reality, and we don't have a clue yep. as to how to operate it. So when maybe you or somebody else creates an AGI system, and you get to ask her one question, what would that question be? outside the simulation. Say in your mind, say to yourself, I am more than my physical body because I am more than physical matter. I can perceive that which is greater than the physical world. Broadcasting from a shack on a hill in the Mossy Creek Bottoms of Cane Creek, Arkansas. This is Lighting the Void. I'm your host, Joe Roop. Thanks for joining us tonight on this Wednesday night, August the 19th, on into the 20th. We are live on KTLK Digital Broadcasting, the Fringe FM, every single night here for you, Monday through Friday night. And we talk about all things consciousness, conscious exploration, metaphysics, the occult, the paranormal, just plain fringy stuff. Come to find out in these day and age. Most of the stuff that we think is fringe is starting to turn a little mainstream and even provable. Tonight, Steve Burgess is here with us, and we're going to be going into the realms of the unconscious, the subconscious, the collective unconscious, what do you call it? What everybody's got a name for, Carl Jung, Sigmund Freud, all that stuff, right? NLP, what's going on in there? This is the favorite place of the show to investigate when it comes to the mind and what things are capable of things there like past life regression is it an actual doorway to the spirit realm what's going on here um steve's been doing this stuff for a while we're going to talk about that coming up too i want to thank uh the network sponsors at get the t.com as well as ancient and metaphorical archaeology if you've had some trauma especially from a paranormal nature you got to call barbara at at uh metaphorical archaeology I was almost said paranormal archaeology. Uh, sorry about that, Barbara. <laughs> but uh, the, what I'm going to start doing is putting that phone number up on the website, too, so you guys can actually see uh, the number itself there. And uh, the banners on the new website are up, too. I want to just, you know, like apologize really quick about the last show. Like I said, we're moving this stuff over, so I'm having to monitor the station like 24-7. But you have to understand that I have a life too. So sometimes I actually have to get up away from the computer and it, and it does scare me because stuff like that happens. But once we get everything set, once we get everything in motion, it's all going to be good, good in the hood. That's why everything kind of works late at night here. Cause I'm actually here, but I will tell you this. I am uh, planning on taking a trip away from the shack this weekend for a little while to a different area so that I can get a studio set up there as well. And we can have, uh, an even bigger 
and better setup for the Fringe FM. Talk a little bit about that later, possibly. All right, so let's let's get into the show here and and bring on our guest. Um, now, well, I do want to thank Mary for coming on last night. That was an outstanding show, and guys, don't worry. There's one thing that I ha- that you will know. If Mary comes on, you can bet all the archives are going to get caught up soon because there's no way uh, we're going to leave that one off the table too long. All right, so don't worry. Tonight, probably after the show, I'll catch him up or first thing in the morning. So Steve's here with us, and uh, he's here with us early in the morning, and it's that's fantastic. That's really a special thing. So he's uh, he's been a full-time hypnotherapist in East Yorkshire, England, and Norway since 1992. And in that time, he completed over 15,000 one-to-one therapy sessions. He's an internationally acclaimed therapy trainer, running courses for a variety of organizations around the UK and in Norway. And Steve is a former vice chair of the UK Guild of Hypnotist Examiners, and he is accepted as an authority on hypnotic regression, as well as being an advanced EFT practitioner and NLP master. He has completed many thousands of past life regressions with his clients in his books, Famous Past Lives, and The Power of a Past Life Regression, which describes some of his experiences in past life therapy. He has appeared on Sky One TV, GM TV, and Yorkshire TV, and has been regularly featured on the BBC, local radio, and his work has appeared frequently in a variety of publications. He now divides his time between Norway and the UK, and he has established He's an established as a hypnotherapy training school or a hypnotherapy training school, excuse me, in Norway. His YouTube channel, Hypno for All, contains a variety of Steve's free hypnotherapy recordings. Interesting stuff. Thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. I know it's early over there. Thank you. Uh, my pleasure, Joe. Good to be here. It is very early over here, so hopefully my brain is going to kick in at any minute and uh, we can have a good interview. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, I'm really interested in this. Um, and just the more that we've talked about uh, conscious exploration, astral travel, the out-of-body experience, pretty much all paranormal activity seems a lot of things either start in the mind. And when I say the mind, I'm not necessarily talking about the brain, but there's just so much that happens in the subconscious. Um, it's it's incredible, you know, even the, uh, what do they call it, uh, the placebo effect, which abs- makes absolutely no sense. Mm-hmm. The things that it does, you know, so it's awfully powerful, and I just, yeah. um, I'm very impressed There's with even, it. Even the nocebo effects, the yeah, placebo right. effects, is, is, is when a doctor gives a tablet to a patient which has got sugar in it and says this will help you, and the patient gets better, but. There's a nocebo effect is when the doctor gives the tablet to the patient and says, this is just sugar, <laughs> and it still works. <laughs> yeah. The patient still gets better, so absolutely remarkable. Now, i got to ask you, like, everybody's interested in past life regression because everybody thinks they have, they're all trying to figure out their past lives. For some reason, mm. some people get obsessed with it where they actually forget about their own life. <laughs> you know, they want to figure out where they came from. <laughs> I've, I've done that a few times, but... Just curious, like, what's your what is regression to you? Okay, regression is very simply regression means just to go back into the past in our thoughts. So, uh, if I were to say to you, uh, you know, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Um, you, you know, you'd think about it and then you'd tell me the, whatever you ate for breakfast. And in fact, that's regression. You've just regressed. So, whenever we think about the past, we are regressing. In therapy terms or hypnotherapy terms or past life regression terms, to regress means to go back when a person is in trance, in hypnosis, usually into some form of trauma that is causing a problem in this present lifetime. And when they release the trauma, then the, the problem gets better. Sometimes people just go back in hypnosis to experience a past life uh, just for the sake of doing past life sessions. Uh, They're interested. Uh, And some people go back into the past life and they get information which makes sense of the problem in this life. So they get an understanding. So regression is to go back in trance, usually to release problems from the past. And occasionally we can even go back into what I call positive past lives, which is where we can go back into a previous life where we had some quality or an ability, you could say, that we would like to have in this present lifetime. And we can bring it through from the past life into this life. So if a person wants to play a musical instrument better, there's a possibility in a past life they played an instrument well. Or it may just be that we need to go into a 
past life where they had feelings of freedom and they can bring the feeling of freedom into this life and um, connect it to playing the musical instrument so they play more freely. So regression is, and it's extremely powerful. It's an extremely powerful process. And do you think that, um, see, I think a big thing a lot of people look into this is like, there are uh, a lot of connections, friendships, families, uh, partnerships, things like that. And it's like, mm. you hear this a lot, especially with tarot readers and, you know, just people that do divination and stuff. They, they say, well, this is a karmic person and this is a soulmate and this is a twin flame mm. and this is that. And there's just so many labels that are from the, I guess, the alternative or metaphysical um, crowd. I wonder about that, though, like. Do you ever figure that stuff out? Like, is this, you know, is like, is this my person or is this just somebody here to help me grow and learn something else? Or, you know, like, does that stuff come to, to pass? Yeah. I mean, it's a big question, is that, Joe? And, and I mean, some of this is a bit new agey. Um, mm -hmm. And I think some people, you know, very often get into relationships and immediately because they love somebody, they say, it's, oh, it's a, it's a twin flame or, or it's my soulmate or whatever. Um, and that could be the case. I mean, from my perspective, having done thousands and thousands of past life regressions, uh, it does appear that some people are closer to us than others right. over many lifetimes. And those people who are closest to us, we tend to reincarnate very often with uh, in different ways in order to help us to grow, in order to help, to help us to learn. Um, so whether these people are actually uh, soulmates, I'm absolutely, I'm, I'm, you, you can't really tell. I, I think, you know, the concept is that there's a wonderful book um, called Journey of Souls by oh, yeah. uh, Michael New, and he does all of his work in between lives, and he sort of, his clients come up with very um, structure, a lot of structure when we die, uh, and we go into spirit, our soul goes into, cl uh, around clusters of souls, and so some of the souls within that cluster, if you think about a big, a round bag full of uh, souls, then the ones that are closest to us in the center are the ones that we tend to reincarnate most closely with yeah. over many lifetimes. And the ones around the edges are people who we incarnate with in, in gentle ways or we don't have that deep connection with them. Uh, but whether these people are, are, are soulmates, it's, I'm not too sure to be honest. But you detail a lot of this in your book, The Power of Past Life Regression. There's, I mean, what are some of the major things that come up in, in that book or in these with this, most of your clients? Yeah. Well, the, 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 the aim of regression for me as a therapist is to heal a client's problem in this life. And any problem that a person has, any issue, could come from traumas in previous lives. And we're talking about an incredibly wide range of problems. So from physical in illness, to depression, to phobias, anxiety states, uh, anger issues, relationship problems, addictions, weight problems, etc., etc., etc. So the aim of, of working in the past is to release the trauma to get the client better now. And uh, my clients, usually people come to me with no interest in past lives actually. Uh, very little knowledge about them. They just sit in front of me and say, I've got a problem, can you help me? And their subconscious, which is this all-knowing, all-wise part of the mind, knows where to take them. It takes them back into previous lives and they release the problem in this lifetime. A lot of the therapy is what I call death trauma therapy. I would say that probably 70% of past life regression is releasing death trauma. And once that trauma is released from the, a traumatic death, then the person gets better. Um, so just as an example, um, in Power of Past Life Regression in the book, I write about a boy who came to me who was 13 with migraines. And he was having migraines every three or four weeks. He was off school for several days at a time. Um, and obviously his schooling was, su it was really suffering. And his mom brought him to me. She actually sat in my office. Well, I used to have an office. I do all my sessions online nowadays. But uh, she sat behind me in my office, watched the session. And she was amazed when his subconscious took him back into eight past lives. 
Wow. And my, my experience with, well, I mean, very man, this is a 13-year-old boy. He's not into past life regression. He's he, he just got these awful headaches every few weeks. Wow. Yeah. Um, and my experience with past lives, you know, Joe, is that usually they have migraines, uh, sorry, with, with migraines, migraines have usually been caused by deaths in past lifetimes wow. where there have been blows to the head. Um, and the, what happens is the energy of the, the head damage is brought into this present lifetime and is replayed regularly and causes the migraines. So, and he was a fast worker. We worked in all eight past lives in one session, one hour, completely cleared them all. He went from one past life to another. So um, I can't remember the actual... Um, the uh, the chronological order you could say of the past lives, but for example, he went he went I took him into trance, he went into a past life where he was a a man standing in his garden and his wife was having an affair with his best friend and she came up behind him with a big spade and she smashes him around the back of the head with the spade he falls down dead, um, he went straight into the next past life where he was an old man climbing up a ladder to fix a clock and the ladder broke and he fell from quite a height, landed on his head, that dead. And he went into the next past life where he was a man in a bar and the fight, it took place and he started to get beaten up and his head was kicked in and he died. He went into the next past life, he's driving a car and a, and a truck hits the car and smashes the car up and he hits his head on the steering wheel at a fast speed and smashes his head to pieces and dies. And he went into the next past life where wow. he was a young boy at school and the school bully, uh, he stood up to the school bully, so the school bully, uh, he kicked the school bully. Uh, so the school bully gets hold of him and starts smashing his head against a wall. Uh, oh and then he's, he dies as his mom's taking him to hospital. Um, and, and it was just eight. I mean, I turned around at one point and his mom was sitting there with her mouth wide open. Her jaw was on the floor. She couldn't believe this. His migraines were cured in that one session. Are you and, serious? Uh, like just him going through that caused yep. it? Wow. Yeah. It released the trauma energy in the head and he, and the migraines got better. So, you know, people often say, oh, this is all imaginary or it's, you know. But why did that boy create that in order to get better with no previous knowledge? That's a, past yeah, life? Right, exactly. And, you know, we have so many ills and ailments, like things like that, that don't make sense. And let me think of one that just mm -hmm. comes up for a lot of people. Back pain, right? Does that come up Back. in your sessions too? It does, and one of the most remarkable sessions I ever had was with a client who came with lower back pain, and she was in a she was a lovely lady, very left brain lady. She was actually in the legal profession, so she wasn't into all this past life stuff, um, and she'd she'd even had surgery on the back, and they couldn't find anything wrong with the back. They they opened her up under under anaesthetic. Couldn't find anything wrong with her back. Just stitched her back up and sent her home with painkillers. Um, and she was getting overweight. She couldn't exercise because of the pain. It was there 24 hours a day. She was depressed because of it. And her subconscious, she came to me, you know, needed help with the pain. And the th hypnotherapists tend to do a lot of work with pain because hypnosis can be very effective with it. And, uh, I mean, for example, I've even done, and this is another story, if you want to talk about that later, I've, I've even taken part in an operation, major really? surgery, without any anaesthetic, an operation which, which saved wow. a lady's life 20-odd years ago. And that's another story. But this lady came with a back pain. A subconscious indicated there were four past lives causing the back pain. And the first past life was the big one. Uh, the, the others were smaller ones, didn't have much effect on her. And she went back into a past life as a young Nazi soldier, as a male Nazi soldier in World War II. Oh. And this Nazi soldier was, a uh, young man, was very naive and very artistic. And what happened is he became part of a, a Nazi war team that were going around Europe robbing art treasures and then shipping them back to Berlin. And um, then things start to go wrong, and he ends up on the Eastern Front in Russia. And uh, bear in mind, my client is just laying there, you know, she's in the past life, she's got her eyes closed, she's talking to me about what she's seeing, what she's feeling. And she's saying, we're stuck, we're about 40 miles from Moscow, we're in a little town called Shmlensk, or Shmlonsk. Uh, and we can't get the supplies through, the uh, the benzene's not coming through for the trucks. We're stuck in the snow. We're bogged down. Winter's coming. 
um, and there were Russian snipers around and skirmishes going on, and this young man was terrified. Then what happened is this young man then um, found out or heard about that in a in a, a village behind the lines, in a village, a Russian village that the Nazis had captured, there was an icon in a church which might be worth looking at to steal. And so this young man, they'd made, he made the biggest mistake of his life. He hops on a motorbike and goes to the village a couple of miles away without an armed escort. He thought he was safe. Now what actually happened, and, and I'll sort of be a bit dramatic here. This doesn't happen in every session, but this was a dramatic session. Um, she's laying in trances, my client. I'm saying, what's happening now? So she said, well, I've got off the motorbike. I found the village. I found the church. Um, I'm walking towards the church looking for the entrance. And then suddenly she screamed. She went, ah, ah. Wow. She leapt a, about a meter in the air. And she screamed out, her whole body jerked up. She landed with a crash in the chair and she was just oh, 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 screaming and yelling and crying and moaning. My God, man. And I said, what's happened? She said, I've been shot. I've been shot. I've been shot. And she's coughing and coughing imaginary blood up. Obviously, she wasn't doing it in the session. Sure. Um, and then she took about 20 minutes to die. Um, and basically, the sniper, the sniper had just shot her, left her to die. But she sounded um, I mean, like from the from the way you just yelled right there, it sounded no, it, l like a real shot, didn't it? Like she was it really. Was. It, it, it yeah. was a hundred times bigger than what I've just explained, Joe. I mean, she leapt about a, a a yard in the air, crashed down, and then she was coughing and spluttering and moaning um, as she died. Um, and actually, I mean, it was a hell of a shot for me, as you can imagine, because yeah, I, bet. <laughs> I, just, I hit the I hit the ceiling. Um, and um, she then died, went into spirit. We went back through the death a few times. This is one of the features of regression therapy. We often have to relive it to release the energy fully, which isn't fun. It's not a nice process, but it has to be done because it clears out the, the emotions. Um, and um, she came out of trance at the end of the session, was very shocked and surprised. But the back pain had gone. And did, did, she they came remember, back to, did she remember what she, or did when oh, she... Oh, everything. Yeah. Okay. Most people, I mean, we, we occasionally we get a, a phenomenon called hypnotic amnesia, which is where a client comes out of trance and can't remember what happened in the trance. But in 90, I would say 98% of sessions, clients remember it vividly and they remember it vividly for the rest of their lives. But of course, the energy has gone out of it, the pain or the emotion. So it's just like seeing the memory on a screen. It doesn't hurt them anymore. Um, but she came back a week or so later. We, we the back pain was eighty percent better. We cleared up the other three past lives. We did some work on the depression, well, and fantastic. the back pain was completely cured. I mean, totally and utterly cured, Joe. And um, I often say, if there's a mystery illness, and hers was a mystery illness, it's nearly always a past life that's causing it. Well, you know, the thing about it is, is uh, when you get into spirituality and you get into all of this, you know, parapsychological, hypnotism, all this stuff you start learning about spirituality, uh, the subconscious, the connections, you can identify, you become aware of your own subconscious and your programs and what you need to work on. And then, and then it's really cool because you start connecting with other people that are aware of these things too. But to, to get rid of them or to cure them or to grow or progress is freaking hard sometimes. And that's why we call it karma because it seems like a curse sometimes. But if you're saying like some of this stuff just can be gone after this hypnosis after, after it's, it's amazing. yeah i mean I've, I've been doing this for 28 years as you said at the start over 15,000 therapy sessions and if for me regression and past life regression is the most powerful uh, therapy technique that i know um and i also regress back into this life of course because we we always have issues from this lifetime um, we do rebirthing. I take clients back to re-experience the birth, the time in the womb. Um, I also do regression back into our ancestors' lives because we inherit trauma from our ancestors. And that also needs to be released in the same way. Uh, I also do regression, alien abduction regression. I've done uh, quite a bit of that over the years. Um, so regression really does open up and unlock secrets, as you've said, in the mind. Um, but for me, the most important thing is it, people find it fascinating. But for me, I'm just a jobbing therapist. I want my clients to get better uh, and it gets people better.
Yeah, because I can imagine it's an intimate session. I'm, I'm just, just to be honest, you know, like I hide, I hide most of the stuff that to the public, and most most guys like me do, you know, do hide. <laughs> but if I get in there, you know, like you know what I mean. Like I, I don't yeah. open up that that stuff to people. But I, you know, if I I really believed that it was gonna work, like I'm curious, I want to do this, man. Mm-hmm. I, 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 do people ever just break down in front of you before the session? They're like, listen, I, oh, yeah. you know, they tell you what's going on, and they're just so desperate to be done with it. You know? Yeah, 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 very much so. You know, but, uh, we see some very, very damaged individuals, people with a lot of emotional baggage, and 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 they very often, I'm the last resort. It's like I've tried everything else, nothing has worked, and then we find that no wonder nothing has worked because the 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 therapist or the doctor or whatever they've seen has not worked on the roots of the problem. You know, regression is about digging out the emotional roots, the energetic roots of the problem, yeah. so that the, the 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 weed never grows back if you dig it out. Quite a lot of therapy is about cutting the weed down, and a person then gets better for a little while, but then the weed continues to grow and the problem comes back, or it sends shoots out which come out in a different way. Whereas regression is digging out the roots, the plant then isn't doesn't come back again, and you're just completely better. Man, that's fantastic. That's it. I mean, even if, look, even if you don't believe in this stuff, that's got to be worth a try because most of this stuff is, you know, the baggage that people have. It's just plaguing. We got to take our first break. We're at the bottom of the hour here. Steve Burgess is here with us. If you do like the show, please support us by going to lightingthevoid.com. Please click on the Patreon banner or donate, and uh, we'll be right back. More Lighting the Void coming up. And on Lighting the Void, each and every week, you will get to hear shows about magic, mysticism, and many other subjects that stretch your mind and imagination. So when I got my mind on the magic and the magic on my mind, I listened to Lighting the Void on the Fringe FM. It's magic. May the gods look with favor upon you. You're wondering what we're going to do to you, right? Liberator Rocket Heater will heat your home for free. The highly efficient Liberator Rocket Heater has no moving parts. It's safe and strong, constructed of quarter-inch steel. So like all things made in the USA, it's built to last. Uses any kind of wood, sticks, even scrap in its gravity-fed firebox. And it heats workshops, homes, garages, outbuildings, industrial areas, and barns. Watch the video of this blast furnace stove in action. Visit rocketheater.com. That's rocketheater.com. Hey, is that a new music app? Yeah, check it out. Surfer Music Discovery. It links to thousands of online stations, but the twist is you see the song names and artists that are now playing live. That's different. No guessing. Looks like a waterfall of music. So many formats. Rock, oldies, country, R&B, jazz, and a whole lot more. How's that spelled? Surfer. S-U-R-F-R. Is it expensive? It's free. No need to sign up or sign in. Get the Surfer Music app free from Google Play or the App Store. This is Corbin, son of the one and only Joe Roop, and you're listening to The Fringe FM. Have you ever seen an ad or banner which brought you a feeling that someone is reading your mind or even listening to your conversations? Your online data is being used against you. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable. You can use it on as many devices as you'd like simultaneously. Surfshark encrypts all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensures that your IP address remains hidden. The VPN service that we use at UFO Seekers plus one month free for $1.99 a month. Visit surfshark.deals/seekers. In your face, all over the place. We're online 24 7. 24 7. You're listening to the hottest internet station. 
Have you suffered in silence or experienced stress from a paranormal experience? Even if it happened 20 years ago, when thinking or talking about it today still makes you feel sick to your stomach or makes your heart beat faster, or you suddenly can't breathe. Maybe you even feel those old familiar signs of a panic attack trying to reach the surface. You could have unprocessed emotional responses. Those reactions of terror and trauma are no different than living through a horrible assault, childhood abuse, or a terrible car accident. It can be nearly impossible to find help. The very instance of seeing a ghost or encountering a cryptid could be clinically described as seeing or hearing things that aren't there. You could be considered psychotic, or at best, you're just not taken seriously. Out of a growing mountain of research, the National Institute for Integrative Healthcare showed that 8 out of 10 veterans who completed just 6 one-hour EFT sessions no longer tested positive for PTSD. If you've had paranormal trauma, you can contact Metaphorical Archaeology by calling 214-995-3754. Again, that's 214-995-3754 for a discreet consultation. I'm Clyde Lewis. You are listening to The Fringe FM. You're listening to Lighting the Void Radio. Okay, we're back. Steve Burgess, our guest tonight. We're discussing his work in hypnosis, regression, NLP, these types of therapy. I was talking to uh, Steve during the break, and I kind of want to keep this on the table here. Uh, You know, I I probably should record half the stuff we talk about during the breaks and give it to the patrons because some really cool stuff that gets talked about during the breaks, right? But uh, the the thing is, like, when we have these discussions about... uh, psychology and i've had many of them with my friends it's they get into this uh, Oedipus theory or whatever now with about freud and people get dogmatic everything goes back to the parents and it's like yeah okay well come on like most people identify the problems they have with their parents maybe there's some subconscious stuff they just ain't seeing what they do but most intelligent people that get into psychology or spirituality at, at at a very early onset get into that and understand some of the things that they do but the, isn't the bigger stuff, it's, it's much deeper, right? Doesn't it go into uh, past life stuff? I have to believe that it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then one of the problems, I mean, you know, Freudian stuff and psychology is, is a very dogmatic process in many cases. Um, and, and it gets in the way, you know, people think that, you know, you have to be a psychologist to understand these things. No, you don't. Um, I mean, Freud was almost obsessed with proving that everything comes from, it's sexual, everything has sexual undertones. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, okay, there are, a lot of stuff does have sexual undertones, but most of it doesn't. And, you know, I, I, I've had clients, for example, with a flying phobia, and they find that they died in the First World War in a plane crash, you know, they were shot down uh, over the fields in France. That isn't sexual. They died in a past life when they were right. flying, and therefore they've got a fear of flying in this life. I have a client who comes with a phobia of dogs, um, and she she said, I don't know. I've had it all of my life. I took her back into uh, in regression to the cause of that. She actually went back to when she was about two years old in this lifetime, and she relived when mommy put her in a little buggy to take her for a walk, this little two-year-old girl. Uh, mommy straps her into the buggy and uh, takes her to the local park, sits her in front of the duck pond to watch the ducks, and then mommy goes off to ta- chat to a friend. Mm. My client's laying in trance, and all of a- and she was quite happy. Then all of a sudden, she started to react. She starts to pull her head over to one side and pull her, her face. She started to get scared. And I said, what's happening? She said, there's a dog. There's a dog and it's sniffing me and it's licking me. And the next thing, in the chair in trance, she hit the dog. Her arm came out and hit this imaginary dog. And the dog bit her. So then she was screaming and crying in the chair and crying and screaming. It bit her on the face. And, of course, she couldn't get out. She was trapped So, uh, because she was strapped into this thing. Um, And she cried and, and she released that emotion. She released the fear. Uh, she came out of trance. She'd never remembered that memory in the whole of her life, but as she relived it in trance, she said, yeah, I remember that happened now. I'd forgotten about that. It was what we call a repressed memory. Um, 
And uh, the reason she wanted the phobia fixing is she was about to travel to the States to visit her daughter, who had a dog. And she said, last year we went there, the dog had to go into kennels for several weeks. And that's not fair on the dog or my daughter's family. About six weeks later, there was a knock on my door and she's standing there with photographs of herself sitting in the back of a car with her arm around this dirty great big dog <laughs> in the wow. States on holiday. Um, there's Who's nothing going? sexual there. There's no. nothing sexual there. You know, I mean, it's just remarkable how, um, you know, this, this, uh, that the Freudian stuff has become an obsession and it's become, uh, and forgive me. And if there are any psychoanalysts listening, you know, they, they'll be spitting feathers at the moment. Um, but you know, psychoanalysis can go on for years and years in the hope of finding something. Um, you know, us hypnotherapists are appalled at this. We get people better in sessions. Um, it's most unusual to have more than 20, 25 sessions of hypnotherapy, whereas people can be going for years for analysis. So there is this sort of slavish, mainstream way of working. Um, and yet, of course, you've got the wonderful book on uh, past life regression, Many Lives, Many, Last Many Masters, by Brian Weiss, who was a traditional psychiatrist or psychologist. Yeah. And he was struggling with a client who came to him, a lady. And it was only when she accidentally he took her into trance to try some hypnosis because nothing else was working. And she, she spontaneously regressed into past lives that she got better. And then he became fascinated with this, tra trained up in past life therapy. And now he's one of the main men in the world with past life, uh, past life regression. So, you know, the, the mainstream system just doesn't work uh, as well as this stuff does. How, how willing does someone have to be, like, say I came into your office and I didn't, you know, I didn't uh, believe in past lives or anything like that. Um, do people like that still end up going into past life stuff? In most cases, yes. I mean, it doesn't matter what the client believes. It's what the subconscious wants to do. Um, of course, when we're in trance, we can still, we're in control. We're not out of control. So if a person wants to block it or resist it, they can do that. But that sort of resistance, in most cases, is softened so that most clients allow, uh, allow it to happen anyway. In fact, there are occasions. I mean, uh, this is how I got into past life regression there are occasions when clients spontaneously regress and um you know most people don't have a belief in regret in past lives when they come to see me um but uh, the how i got into this i, I, I was um, just a normal hypnotherapist you could say using standard hypnotherapy techniques and for about six to nine months of my career that's what i was doing uh, and then a young man came into me with a severe anxiety state. I mean, he was in his early 20s. He sat in front of me. He was shaking. He was hyperventilating. He was stuttering and stammering. He was completely wracked with anxiety. And I said, well, what's caused it? You know, because you don't catch anxiety. It's caused by something that's going on in the right. subconscious. He said, I don't know. He said, I, I've always been a worrier, even as a child. But... Over the last few years, especially since we've had the children, the anxiety has got worse and worse. And and now I'm and he, he's sitting talking like now it's got so, so bad that I I'm just like this all the time. I, I can't move. I, I sit at home. I'm shaking all day long. Uh, I can't go to work. I have to give my job up. Um, and and, and I, I I just I can't sleep. It's just there all the time. And um, so there was no apparent cause to it, which often means it's past life. So um, I thought, okay, well, it's a fairly severe but standard anxiety case. So I took him into trance and he relaxed beautifully. Hypnosis is a form of relaxation, as you're probably aware. Sure, yeah. He, re he relaxed beautifully. And I'm thinking, oh, this is great. You know, his whole body's soft and his breathing calmed down. And I'm expecting just to do some standard hypnotic suggestion work there to feed his subconscious with suggestions that he's going to be more relaxed from now on. And then all of a sudden, Joe, from out of nowhere, he started to shake. His whole body started to shake. And he started to, he was half shouting and half whispering. And he was saying, no, no, hide, hide, hide in here quickly, here quickly, hide, hide in here quickly, Get, bring the children, hide the children, hide, quiet, quiet, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. And then all of a sudden, he started to scream and writhe at the top of his voice. No, no, not the children. No, 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 no. Ah! 
Wow. He just slumped in the chair. <clears throat> Excuse me, completely slumped in the chair. And he was totally quiet. And I said, and I was shocked. I mean, this is the first time I'd experienced this. So I said, what? How are you? Are you okay? He said, I feel wonderful. Oh, I feel so calm. I feel so calm. I've never felt like this before. I said, what was happening? He said, there were, it was like I was a man and we had children, me and my wife, who were hiding from soldiers. And they were coming, trying to find us and we were hiding. And then they found us and they shot us all and killed us. What was that about? Just what, it was a past life, I think. And, you know, it's come out of nowhere. But how do you feel? He said, I'm, I'm completely better. He was completely cured. <laughs> In 10 minutes, he was completely cured. And I thought, well, why don't I know about this? I, I knew about past life regression, of course, and reincarnation. But as a therapist, I hadn't been trained in it. So this is significant, I thought. I, I, I got information from an American past life association, started to then develop it. And then I've developed a system now that, that I use um, with clients uh, in regression. And, and that gets people better. You know, this is a very good system, obviously. But that came about because of a client spontaneously regressing um, from nowhere. He this had was no a, this, okay, so yeah, so just to reiterate this, this was a person no. that that didn't have any intention to go into a past life? None whatsoever. None whatsoever. I mean, I wasn't even uh, talking about it. I don't talk a lot about past lives to my clients because I don't want to lead them into anything that, you know, I, can't, I don't want to be accused of leading them. Sure. Although, of course... I am well known as a past life therapist, of course, so people sometimes expect it. But I still see many people who uh, who are there who just want to get better. And, uh, you know, they, they just say, I've got this problem. Can you help me? And, uh, okay, there are people who, with a belief in past lives, but generally not. I mean, occasionally I had one gentleman who was... Um, <laughs> he was a, a functioning alcoholic. He was a top barrister down in London. Um, and in fact, he came to me because his girlfriend, his partner, her alcoholism had been cured in, again, very quickly, actually after one session of regression, but we did other sessions. Uh, she was a functioning alcoholic of 16 years. She was working every day. Wow. She'd get home five, six o'clock in the evening and start drinking. Every night was, you know, three quarters of a bottle of brandy, whatever. She was drunk by nine o'clock. She had no life, she was overweight, her skin looked terrible, she was physically ill, she had asthma. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, she, came to, she came to me because she was going to prove that I couldn't help her. <laughs> well, I mean, um, uh, look, I've had alcoholism in my family. I mean, it, it, obviously people listen to the show know that it killed my mother, things like that. So oh, it's a deep, yeah. it's, man, it's, it is deep. It's, so I could understand why she would say that. I could understand yeah. her desperation for sure. Yeah. But, and and it, she, she went into trance. She started to cry. She went into a past life, um, which was a heck of a shock. And at the end of that session, she came out of trance and since that day she has never drunk a drop of alcohol this is maybe 20 years ago um that, that's extraordinary we don't get many one session cures you know some clients we've got to work in several sessions quite a lot of sessions occasionally um but she um she lived a past life in the first world war she died in the trenches she was uh, killed uh, in a roman amphitheater uh, as a christian fed to the lions um, she was on board a galleon sailing ship and got blown to pieces. So we cleared all of those uh, past lives and, and she's never gone back to alcohol. So then her, a few years later, she connected with this top barrister who was a, an alcoholic. And he came to me and he said, um, but don't do any of this past life stuff, Burgess, because I am a practicing Roman Catholic and I don't believe in all that past life nonsense. So I said, no, it's not a problem. We go where your subconscious wants us to go. And, of course, it took him into a past life in the French Revolution. <laughs> uh, what did you do at that point, though? Because he didn't want well, that. Well, he didn't want it, but he went with it. I mean, he was quite shocked. <clears throat> the, the, one of the nice things about trance is it does, re it does reduce re resistance. There's a natural reduction with it. Uh, but he went along with it, and he was a French aristocrat. 
who uh, was fell deeply in love with a woman in the French Revolution, who um, then she actually, she didn't die, but she, she went away from France to get away from all the horrors, and he never saw her again. Oh, and man. he brought that emotional pain into this life. And, of course, the alcohol. Alcohol is always a way of um, anaesthetizing emotional pain. So that was the cause of his emotional pain. He never got over that, um, as, in, as is any addiction. And, uh, you know, anybody who's addicted to something, that addiction, whether it's alcohol, chocolate, uh, food, uh, sex, shopping, whatever, is a way of anaesthetizing or softening a person's emotional pain. Regression is about going into the emotional pain to release it. So then there's no emotional pain. <clears throat> and I then try, the yeah, was, right. I get you. I, this is amazing to me, man. So I, I get that because I try to, uh, you know, <laughs> I deal with my emotions on my own unless I'm really close to somebody most of the time. But it's, the thing is, is like emotional pain. You you hear people and they say, I'd rather have my arm chopped off than feel this. I, I, yes, people correct. say, oh, man, that's a euphemism. You wouldn't really want that. No. Some people would rather, like if they could trade. They would definitely rather trade that, for sure. Yes, and, very uh, much so. And I don't think yeah. people get that. I think certain people that are like are not very emotionally balanced, just in my opinion, or uh, emotionally in, uh, unintelligent. They they think that's ridiculous. But mm -hmm. to identify with your emotions is to me is a good thing to understand them. Do you find that people yeah. when they come out of these sessions with you that they're more emotionally balanced or intelligent, so to speak? Yes, the, the person who has this it very often becomes a bigger person, and by that I don't mean size-wise, but they are bigger. They are more. They have more knowledge about themselves. Um, they are more authentic. And I mean, for example, you mentioned earlier. You know, we all wear a mask. Everybody puts a mask right. on uh, to live in the world. Not or not these ridiculous muzzles that people are wearing because of the virus. But um, we all wear a mask to hide who we truly are. What happens when you've had good therapy? you don't need the mask anymore. Right. And you become a more authentic, balanced human being. Um, and that's a way, you become freer. That's the word I often use. Therapy sets you free. Mm. And good therapy sets you free. And as a free person, you live in the world in a completely different way. You're less reactive to things. You don't become as angry or as upset about things. Right. Um, you become just more balanced. And that's a wonderful state to be in. Yeah, even yeah, I totally agree. The, the here's the thing. Um, so you do hypnotherapy, EFT, NLP. NLP is something like when people hear about NLP, neuralistic program or neuro linguistic mm -hmm. programming, they think, oh man, that's the Jedi mind trick. I don't want anybody doing that stuff to me, <laughs> right? right? I don't want anybody doing yeah. that to me. But but if you got some like, yeah, of course it's manipulating the mind a little bit. But if you've got some stuff that you can't just get rid of, wouldn't and mm -hmm. somebody's like, I can and. I don't know yeah. why you wouldn't allow it. Why? Exactly. It frees you up. It can free you up remarkably well. Um, although, of course, NLP doesn't usually like regression. They prefer to work on the, the present and, and zap stuff around in the mind. Uh, and that works very well. I, I, you know, yeah, I use NLP a lot of the times. But um, NLP has become a religion as well. Uh, in its own way, uh, with its high priests, etc., um, and they they make great claims for it, as if it can, you know, they'll, they'll say it can sort your life out, it can wash the dishes, it can take the dog for a walk, almost, you know, it can do everything, um, and it has its limitations, but um, it can be very powerful. But for me, I think regression is even more powerful than NLP. So you got and in, started into this work with that guy that went into was that your first mm. time that someone did that yeah absolutely uh, we call that a spontaneous regression uh, the subconscious just takes the client where it needs to go to um, and gets them better and and that was extraordinary for me I'd never seen anything like it um, so after that as I say I started to look at it much more seriously and develop it and uh, and then create a system which is I have a system I use, what's called an idiomotor response in the sessions. And what this basically means is that the subconscious, when the client is in trance, takes control of a finger or a hand. It moves a finger uh, all by itself. And that finger movement becomes a way that the subconscious 
can respond to my questions by saying yes. If the finger moves, it says yes. Um, so I'm then just asking the subconscious, whereabouts are the causes of the depression coming from? The phobia, the anxiety, the, 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 the back pain, etc. Yeah. And the subconscious tells me, is it in this life? Is it a past life? Is it an ancestor's life? We can find out how many past lives, because quite often it's several past lives that are causing the problem. It's not just one. Um, and then we check that it's okay to go back into the stuff, take the client back. And clients experience it in different ways. Some clients don't see the past life, they just feel it. So, for example, I'm what I call non-visual when I'm in a past life. In fact, I had a past life regression session yesterday with a colleague. I actually died. Uh, my, I went back into a past life uh, as a woman, and uh, I had a baby which died in childbirth. So um, oh, man, but that that's traumatic. came through just kinesthetically i don't see anything but i feel it and i felt the emotions certainly in the sadness because uh, like anybody else you know i'm working through my stuff and uh, i believe we all need therapy so i'm having th i have therapy you know to, to clear my stuff i want to be as balanced as possible um but some people just experience stuff what we call kinesthetically with the feelings and the emotions um but the the fascinating cases you could say and the ones that I've written about in the book are where clients are seeing what's happening and they are detailing what's going on in the in the past life. You know, I'm, I'm in a battle and there's somebody coming towards me and I actually had one client who was a psychologist, actually. Um, he came because he was obsessed with a, pa a partner. He couldn't get out of his head, a woman who was in relationship with him and then the relationship broke down and he couldn't get her out of his head. He was obsessed with he her. He became obsessed, yeah. yeah. He was driving past a house 10 times a day and oh listening God. to her answer phone message just for the sake of it. Um, and he, again, was a dramatic experience. He was in past lives and he was just about reliving them as if they were happening. He was a, a Viking warrior in one of the lives. And he went into battle and as he's laid in the chair in front of me, he's swinging his arms around and hacking at people with an axe or a sword and screaming and shouting at them as he's killing people. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously I had to make sure he was safe and he, he stayed in the chair. Um, but he, he could see very clearly what was happening and um, he got better. You know, we released that, all of that connection. That released his, I wonder how that's connected. How does that well, connect it, to that? That's, that's um, interesting. The, the, the main connection, there were the two connections. One was the, um, the trauma of, of seeing his mother die in the past life and not being able to release the emotion because his father was a warrior he said you know strong men don't cry but his wife in the past life she also died in childbirth and his wife in the past life was this partner in this present lifetime oh okay so you know he'd been around her in several past lives in different ways i think in one of the past lives uh, she was his child um, and so, of course, there's this strong connection between them, which has been brought through from past lives. Yeah, right. And See, one, and if he would have went to reg, and I don't mean to cut you off, but I want to say this before, if he would have went to a regular therapist, more than likely they would have said, you know, gave him some type of obsession disorder, right? Like they're, you're, yeah. they're, you're obsessed, you're crazy, there's something wrong with you. But yeah. energetically. He is definitely a, a, attached to this person, love and all this other stuff. And like, yeah. uh, you find a little bit more sympathy, I'm sure, in your case when you when you see these things for certain. Yeah, situations. very much so. Very much so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it all falls into place. Um, uh, you know, somebody with I had a client with severe depression. There were, I think, eight past lives. Um, and, you know, all of that trauma from the past lives, from the deaths. I mean, in one of the past lives, she was um, uh, a Victorian flower seller in Victorian London who was very sick. And uh, she went, she was raped by a doctor who then murdered her. Um, in another past life, she lost a little boy. A little boy died. Her son died. And she never came to terms with that. Oh. Uh, in another past life, she died in battle. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et All of this trauma builds up. It's stored in the subconscious, and it comes out in some way. We can't run away from it, and the subconscious just replays the trauma over and over, and we react to it. So she was reacting it to it in her case by being depressed, 
Um, and it's severe depression. We cleared all those past lives and the depression is lifted. And it's what we call cause and effect therapy, Joe. Sure. You know, my client comes with an effect. So they've got a phobia. They've got a sexual issue. They've got a whatever. That's an effect. What has caused it? And if you can work on the causes and release it. And of course, unfortunately, most therapy is about working in this present lifetime. And that's, there's nothing wrong with healing the wounds of the past in this life. But if a person hasn't got many wounds from this life, Where's it coming from? You don't catch a phobia by sitting next, sitting next to somebody on the bus who's got a phobia. It's caused by underlying emotional stuff, which is being replayed in the subconscious. Um, and so we go for the cause. And once the cause is released, the effect gets better. It's very simple. Therapy is very simple uh, in this case. Has that happened too, like with physical issues? as well yeah, right? yeah yeah regularly yeah very uh, you know I, I you possibly heard of louise hay who wrote the wonderful book you can heal your life um and louise hay claims to have cured her own breast cancer by using affirmations and visualizations and releasing emotional pain she states that all physical issues have emotional causes when I first started this job 28 years ago, I used to think that's nonsense. Well, <laughs> I've seen so many extraordinary things over 28 years. I think she's got it right on the button. For me, all physical problems have emotional causes. And, um, Interesting. So, yeah, when a client comes with a physical problem, yes, we can work on the symptom, and that can help. But if you can get into the emotional cause, and this includes cancer, you can actually release the emotional causes and the body then gets better. That's fascinating stuff. I got a ton more questions for sure. We'll open up the phones too. Uh, we're at the top of the hour here. We're here with Steve Burgess. You guys uh, put the website in the Fringe FM chat as well, so, but you can go to uh, hypnoblogpod.wordpress.com as well as lionheart-training.com. Both of those are in the Fringe FM chat. We'll be right back. Stay with us. and Dave from Surviving the System, and you're listening to The Fringe FM. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the best revenge is success. Telepath is a weekly digital newsletter filled with the latest paranormal news, trending topics, and fresh articles from some of the most popular critical thinkers in the community today. Stay informed on your favorite paranormal podcasts and live streaming talk shows. Interact with the telepath and upload your paranormal story or pics. It could be featured in an upcoming edition. Sign up right now for the free telepath newsletter at paranormal.radio. That's paranormal.radio. Pair Abnormal News, I'm Brad Bernards. When NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter arrived in orbit around the moon in 2009, scientists immediately started firing lasers at it. More specifically, they were firing lasers at a small reflector array, roughly the size of a paperback book, trying to bounce light back to Earth. And after almost 10 years, they have finally succeeded, according to reporting in Science Alert. It's the first time photos have been successfully reflected back to Earth from a lunar orbiter, and it not only gives us a new way to perform measurements of and around the moon, it can help us understand the conditions on the lunar surface that could be degrading instruments placed there over 50 years ago. The Apollo program left behind equipment for continued monitoring, such as seismometers and three laser reflectors. Why laser reflectors? Well, if you send a really powerful laser beam at the moon and time how long it takes to bounce back, you can make a really accurate measurement of the distance between the two points based on the speed of light. Vast areas of the Martian night sky pulse in ultraviolet light, according to images from NASA's MAVEN spacecraft. The results are being used to illuminate complex circulation patterns in the Martian atmosphere. 
According to NASA, MAVEN's images offer our first global insights into atmospheric motions in Mars' middle atmosphere, a critical region where air currents carry gases between the lowest and highest layers, said Nick Schneider of the University of Colorado's Laboratory for Atmospheric and Space Physics. The brightenings occur when vertical winds carry gases down to regions of higher density, speeding up the chemical reactions that create nitric oxide and power the ultraviolet glow. There's more news at ParaAbnormalRadio.com. I'm Brad Bernards, ParaAbnormal News. Have you ever seen an adder banner which brought you a feeling that someone is reading your mind or even listening to your conversations? Your online data is being used against you. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable. You can use it on as many devices as you'd like simultaneously. The VPN service that we use at UFO Seekers plus one month free for $1.99 a month. Visit surfshark.deals/seekers. We spend almost as much time online as sleep, and that's six to eight hours a day. The internet knows a lot about us, and that's why we should care about our online data. Use Surfshark to encrypt your personal information and send it via a secure VPN tunnel so that no one can see it without your permission. Visit surfshark.deals/seekers. You need to protect yourself from surveillance and targeted advertising. Surfshark encrypts all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensures that your IP address remains hidden. The VPN service that we use at UFO Seekers plus one month free for $1.99 a month. Visit surfshark.deals slash seekers. I'm Ryan Gable, and I want to remind you to keep your radio, phone, tablet, or computer tuned to The Fringe FM and visit the website, thefringe.fm, to listen to the entire lineup of shows. You can also catch my broadcast, The Secret Teachings, Monday through Friday, beginning at 12 a.m. midnight U.S. Pacific Time, right here on The Fringe FM. Born out of the alchemical tradition of Paracelsus is a medical tradition called Spagyria. Though not many people practice this work today, Phoenix Aurelius has been researching and teaching this work for the last 15 years, and he needs your support. Hi, I'm Phoenix Aurelius, and I'm the founder of the Phoenix Aurelius Research Society, where I perform modern scientific research on the methods and techniques of Paracelsian alchemy and Spagyria for health, wellness, agriculture, ecology, and more. All my work is 100% funded by the public, so if you like what I'm doing and you want to support my research, please consider making a purchase of spagyric medicines from my apothecary, fund your own spagyric IDF wellness research, or participate in my group study or one-on-one immersion courses so that you can learn how to perform this work for yourself. I want to thank you in advance for your support. Visit thefringe.fm forward slash alchemy research and enter coupon code fringe and receive 15% off anything and everything on the website. That's thefringe.fm forward slash alchemy research and thank you for doing your part and keep an alchemy alive in the modern day so you love talk radio then you'll love talkstreamlive.com talkstream live is always on 24 7 with the best streaming talk shows find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones it's free readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier just go to talkstreamlive.com be sure to download the free apps from google play or the itunes app store so you love talk radio then you'll love talkstreamlive.com talkstream live is always on 24 7 with the best streaming talk shows find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones it's free readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier just go to talkstreamlive.com be sure to download the free apps from google play or the itunes app store
To the late, late night here on the Fringe FM in the second hour of Lighting the Void, our guest tonight, Steve Burgess. We're discussing regression, his work, past lives, NLP, the subconscious, and some fascinating stories about what goes on in the in this world of uh, regression. In between lives, past lives, our connections, even physical ailments that get seemingly healed in one maybe two sessions stuff that takes lifetimes to heal the amazing power of the subconscious again once i would like to say as i said at the beginning of the show something that we absolutely cannot uh overestimate or underestimate rather simply because of the placebo effect and how it does uh it does just baffle the mind and you brought up steve uh too and again thank you for coming on the show i really appreciate you being here um oh, my pleasure you brought up the nocebo effect it was something even more fascinating you know the first time i realized the power of the subconscious was actually in a bout of opiate addiction you know into my late 20s and mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. friend of mine mm-hmm. w- was taking way more painkillers than i did and yet seemed mm-hmm. to just he just quit and i was like how why, you know, why do I, I've got like, you know, the flying mm-hmm. turkey this and turkey skin and depression, you know, you name every kind of like, uh, like that guy in the movie, I need more blankets and less blankets, you know, what the hell's going <laughs> on, right? And uh, he's, he's like, you know what, I didn't even know, and I f- figured out what it was. He, he was my roommate at the time. He didn't even know he, he had uh, withdrawal. He thought he had the flu. He told his mind it was just a flu and he'd get over it. Gosh. Yeah. The yeah. second you yeah. tell your mind, oh, it's opiate withdrawals. I've got an addiction. It's, yeah. And uh, what I'm saying, don't, don't think that I'm just saying, well, it's all in your mind. But it truly is, though, right? Like, just yeah. on a massively deeper level. Yeah. You know, we, we, we underutilize our mind, our mental capacities, enormously as human beings. And the subconscious especially is so powerful. I mean, the the old Freudian concept of the conscious mind and the subconscious, I often talk about because it it actually is a good good concept. It's very simple. The mind is like an iceberg. The tip of the iceberg above the waves is the conscious thinking mind. But beneath the waves is the bulk of the iceberg, the subconscious mind. And in terms of percentages, it's thought that the conscious mind is something like 0.0001% of our mental capabilities. The subconscious is 99.999% of our minds. And recent uh, research into this uh, by brain researchers, although the mind isn't the brain, um, they, they state that the, the conscious mind takes on board 50-50 bits of information every second. So the thinking mind takes on board 50 pieces of information a second. The subconscious takes on board 11 million pieces of information a second. So that's why hypnotherapy is so powerful. And that's why regression is so powerful. We're working with the engine room of the mind. And when we do that, we can change our lives in so many amazing ways. Uh, And I mean, just think of all the great achievements we've made with our conscious minds. You know, if we add in the subconscious, the power of the subconscious, we, we can be virtually unstoppable. Um, and of course, the, one of the great things about hypnotherapy is some people are naturally hypnotic. 
we find that about 25 to 30 percent of people have an incredible ability to go into trance, uh, which is just fantastic. They are natural hypnotic people say subjects, I don't like the word subjects, but uh, they have a natural hypnotic ability. And with that type of person, then, you know, the, the sky is the limit, really, because they are naturally hypnotic, they go into trance easily. And certainly in regression terms, they're usually able to regress really quite easily. And so there are, so that uh, <laughs> whole idea that the willingness to submit to the hypnotist is a <laughs> yeah. real thing, right? <laughs> Well, yeah, exactly. You, you know, you, you, you've got to want to do this. Um, I often say, you know, I have no control over people. Uh, there has to be, it's a two-way thing. A person has to want to get better and want to do some hypnosis. If they want to block it, they can block it in most cases, uh, in which case there's not a lot we can do. Uh, but a person who just goes with it and allows it to happen then, you know, gets quite often remarkable results. You know, if I would have prepped, like ex extremely prepped for the show, I'd, just mm. as a gag, I would have played that old, uh, um, that old uh, clip from that old movie. It was like uh, Count, I think I don't know, it was Cagliostro or whatever. But the guy that plays the Godfather, what's his name? I can't think of his name off the top of my head. But he did a movie. Oh, Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando. Yeah, he did an old yeah, yeah. black and white about uh, being a magician, and you know he would. He'd come up to him like, you're, you're submitting to the sound of my voice. You're madly in love yes. with me. And da, 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 you know, yeah, and I think that's what people yeah. think that yeah. when they're, they say, oh, man, just... hypnotist and NLP. And I don't want that person. To, I've even been there before. Like, I don't want them digging around in my mind, man. What are they going to do? You know, but most of the time yes, you're not they're not trying to mess you up anyways. It's the media and the commercials where they're using that stuff to mess you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I train hypnotherapists, I train people to be therapists. 99% of hypnotherapists and therapists are just lovely people. They're just very nice, kind people who want people to get better. You know, we're doing this because we want the world to change. Because when a person gets rid of their emotional baggage, they become a new person and the world changes. Because if, if the more people that are more balanced in the world, it means the whole world becomes more balanced. And the world is a pretty screwed up place. And uh, so, you know, every little bit that a therapist does to help the world the person to get better helps the world to get better so but yeah there's so many myths about hypnosis i mean uh, you can imagine i've heard so i go to parties and i'm just sick and tired of people say oh you're when i get introduced as a hypnotherapist whoa don't look him in the eyes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> like, oh funny. not again as if, you know, I think people think I can walk on water. You know, it's, uh, you know, there are so many myths about this stuff. Um, well, understanding but, the subconscious, let's yeah. be honest, uh, it is a powerful thing. I mean, yes, it is. Well, and like anything else, it can be used wrongly. You know, we could manipulate people. Right. As you've said, with an NLP, is can you be quite manipulative? Um, and in fact, we're open to suggestion all the time. I mean, if you watch Darren Brown, uh, the great English sort of psychological illusionist, you could call him. Um, and he uses hypnosis and, and suggestion a heck of a lot. Uh, but he, we're, he says, we're just open to suggestion all the time. And, and of course, advertisers are using the power of suggestion to manipulate us all the time. We don't always pick that up. But in the right hands, when a therapist is doing the job to help people to get better, then it can be quite remarkable the way the mind works. And how it wants to work, because our subconscious wants us to get better. It doesn't want us to hold on to the problems. It wants us to be free. It wants us to be able to move on. Um, and so it's almost desperate at times to help us to get better. Now, and uh, the, the idea of reincarnation, though, I'm sure uh, you run into with this, with people that, you know, like if someone doesn't like the idea of reincarnation, or if maybe they're, like grew up like me, Southern Baptist or something, you know, um, they, do they, do they resist it once they start feeling it? Yeah, they can do. Um, I actually think, you know, subconsciously we all know that reincarnation is a reality. And so, you know, we fight against something which we actually know is a, is a reality. I actually think for me, reincarnation is provable, um, scientifically provable, but it, it just people won't look at it in that way. Um, but, you know, 
the, the, it depends on which half of the world you grew up in, I suppose. We grew up in a Judeo-Christian tradition, which, although it's said, and I'm not trying to be controversial here, and, and you know, please, I don't want people to get annoyed with it, but it is said that Jesus taught reincarnation. There are stories that all the uh, words that he spoke about reincarnation were taken out of the Bible in, I think, the 450s, or taken out of Christian teachings, Christian theology. Uh, at councils that the early Christian church ran because um, the early tr Christian church it said was was um, divided for several hundred years between um, those that followed Paul, St. Paul's uh, doctrines we, he, and in a way he created Christianity and those that followed um, what people would say the early Christian teachings which actually included reincarnation uh, they called it metempsychosis, which is another, a Greek word for reincarnation. And it's said that they took most of Jesus' teachings out at that stage uh, in order to get Paul's doctrines established. Um, but several of Jesus' phrases or several things still remained in the Bible. So Jesus said, as ye sow, so shall ye reap. Um, those, I understand, are Buddha's words from 600 years earlier. And of course, that's a direct re reference to reincarnation. Um, so, you know, I, I think if people were to look at it in much more depth and explore this through a scientific lens, then I believe that reincarnation would be provable scientifically. I mean, we have cases, admittedly for me, not that many cases, because I'm more about releasing trauma and healing, helping the problem to heal but there are cases where we get uh, information that comes through from a past life that there is no way on this earth the client would know that information unless it was coming through from a past life um, I mean just as an example of that my first book was called famous past lives and of course this is one of the myths about uh, hypnotic regression in past lives is that everybody who has been in a past life regression session has been Henry VIII or Cleopatra or somebody very famous um, and it's definitely not the case I mean I've done thousands of regressions and I've had a very small percentage of people who, who have been famous in past lives uh, one of them for example uh, was Queen Elizabeth I the great Elizabeth the great English queen uh, from the 1500s um, and she relived uh, Elizabeth's life, and Elizabeth's love affair uh, with Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester, which is known about. Um, but some of the information she came up with people isn't in history books. But I also had a client who was her elder sister, Queen Mary, Bloody Mary, as she's known. And this lady was a housewife from Middle England, and she came up with such specific information in the regression sessions, I had to go to history books and I found the information in the history books was completely true. But this lady had never read a book on Bloody Mary. She didn't really know anything about her, never seen a documentary or anything. And in fact, this stuff wouldn't be in documentaries because the information was so specific. So when people come up with that type of specific information, well, where else has it come from? It's stuff that you don't see in a movie you can't you can't read it in an average book and you wouldn't hear it on the radio or TV. So where has it come from? It has to be coming from the past life itself. That makes total sense. Yeah, that does. But is there any danger of taking when you take somebody into a past life of like re-traumatizing them maybe? Or? Mm, it's a good question. Very good question. Um, if it's done correctly, there is absolutely no danger at all, but it has to be done correctly. And so, you know, the therapist should know what they're doing and they should have proper training in it. Um, because there's a small, poss it's only a tiny percentage of people who, who could possibly be re-traumatized if it's done wrongly. For example, my first client the young man with the anxiety who he just spontaneously regressed released all the terror that he was holding on to all the fear mm -hmm. and he got better and i wasn't a skilled therapist in those days so the chances of damaging somebody with this stuff is very very small but of course we do have to put in safeguards you know we're working with the human mind and we have to keep our clients safe but any uh, therapist who's credible who's got a good amount of experience and training absolutely no danger whatsoever yeah, I think you'd want to make sure, like, 
people do people kind of screen you a little bit sometimes i bet to make sure oh, yeah. that you're trustworthy yeah, right yeah. yeah yeah very much so and, and, and i'm glad that they do you know we we need to live a life of discrimination we can't just take things on faith um you know i i, I have clients all from all around the world nowadays because i've said all of my sessions are online now um and they go very well but of course um it's still then, you know, possible for me to be a bit of a charlatan. It's easier to do be a charlatan online than it is face to face to somebody. Um, so I'm always happy when people check me out when they look at my website, my blog page, my blog pod page with the podcast, etc. Um, yeah. And get a sense that I know what I'm doing. And um, well, you've got you've got a book of scripts in there that you use. Even I've, I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that. Like, hey, I've got here's some scripts that I use. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Check yeah. them out. So, yeah, absolutely. I've, I've written a lot of scripts and um, and, and sell them on the site as, as well as um, the books, of course, and recordings. Although I do, as you said earlier, I have Hypno for all, which I'm I'm really quite proud about because it's uh, content. It's my YouTube channel with free hypnotherapy recordings. I'm, That's fantastic. I'm so passionate. I want people to 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 love hypnotherapy. I want people to experience it. And so. They can go on there. There are there are hypnotherapy recordings to help with anxiety, with lack of confidence, uh, with smoking, with weight, with irritable bowel syndrome, uh, hypnosis for childbirth. These are free recordings that I've just given out to the world. I want people to get to get into hypnotherapy because the more people who use it, the better it is for all of us. So, um, and, and all the recordings are professionally recorded as well. It does sometimes get a bit of an occult connotation to it. Um, because certain people think, and by the way, that that movie was called Cagliostro, and it was with Orson Welles, not Marlon Brando. You know, <laughs> so Cagliostro, you know, where he's just doing this crazy, like hypnotizing this woman to be obsessed with him, and then puts, then he's like, yeah. look into my eyes, and da da da, he puts her to sleep, you know, and it's just yeah. like that old connotation uh, the has Hollywood people, stuff. yeah, it makes yeah. people think that, and it's still buried in there, and I I think. But but here's the reason why it gets an occult connotation sometimes because the, it's extremely effective. You know we we mm-hmm. brought up um, Israel Regardi uh, was an old Rosicrucian here on the show quite a few times, and in mm-hmm. his sessions before he begins any ritual, he talks uh, especially grounding sessions mantra. Well, what do you think a mantra is? Right, you're it's kind of like it's trance. It's you're going into trance. It's self hypnosis. Yes. You know. Yes, yes, yeah, and and very many healing modalities and spiritual practices use trance without realizing. Um, so, I mean, even meditation is a form of trance. Uh, meditation and trance, are, I say, are sisters. They're very, very connected. But uh, you know, shamanic rituals very often people go into trance. Shamans go into trance, um, and and we've gone into trance for thousands and thousands of years in rituals. So. So many, um, even healing modalities, people will see a healer, for example, and I mean, natural healing, Reiki, these types of things. Very often, um, actually, my belief is that in some cases, what is getting people better when they have healing is not the healing, but it actually they've gone into trance and the subconscious has come through and done some work and got the person better. But of course, the healer then claims the credit and said it's, it's healing. And I don't have any problems with healing. I know it works, but uh, there are occasions when it is trance that is doing the job. And so people think it's something other than what it is. But trance is completely natural. We all go into trance at least 24 times a day. And we daydream when we go on automatic pilot in the car. This is trance. Right, um, right. So, you know, it's a natural process. All we're doing as hypnotherapists is we tend to accentuate the relaxational elements so people uh, relax a little bit more deeply. Um, and then it's easier to tap into the subconscious. Well, the repetitive uh, nature of it, too, like the old uh, Art Bell program when he played the Chase by Giorgio Moroder, and they'd play that song that had that that uh, yes. repetitive thing, you know, that dun, 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 and everybody, oh man, that gives everybody this feeling. They do it every night. <laughs> you know, it becomes yeah. familiar to them. Um, yes, yeah. And I think yeah. I think there's something to be said about that because it's a trigger mm-hmm. that becomes powerful. But I, I yeah. uh, these are the types of things that also scare people. So let, let me just wrap all this fear <laughs> about the subconscious up and the hypnotism with this question. How How delicate is the subconscious once it's penetrated or does it automatically kind of protect itself in a way 
Uh, brilliant question, actually. It's both. Sometimes it can be very delicate and very open to being manipulated. And other times it is completely in control. It's totally safe. It knows exactly what it's doing. Um, and, and I'm not sure why that is, why there's this sort of this dichotomy. But as a general rule, the subconscious will safeguard and protect a person. And that is in the vast majority of, of cases. But there are occasions if a person, it can be manipulated. Um, and somebody who, you know, who with the wrong motivation can over time manipulate the subconscious. Um, but as long as it's done with the right motivation, then the subconscious is just awesome. And it, I mean, for example, I, you know, uh, children, hypnotherapy for children. And I, I do regression on children. Uh, from seven years old upwards and sometimes the child will go into a past life now you can think heck no a child going into a past life what if they're going to a death in a past life and you know I've just I've been sharing with you so far some of the more dramatic cases where people can scream and yell what actually happens is the subconscious doesn't take the, the child into a traumatic past life it creates a metaphor which is like a historical metaphor, a story, which gets the child better. And it's as if the subconscious knows that the child isn't able to, um, to go through anything too traumatic. So it cre very often it's like a nice fantasy, which is sort of maybe a historical fantasy. I, I, a young lad came to see me, I think he was about 10 or 11, with a lack of confidence. And his subconscious took him into a past life where he was... Uh, a young boy about 10 or 11 who was living on a beach um, maybe in Polynesia and all day long he was collecting shells and having a wonderful time mm. and that was the, the experience he had and his confidence grew because of that so the subconscious does protect us in the vast majority of cases it's just that it, like anything else it can be open to manipulation and so that's why it's important to discriminate when you're choosing a therapist Get a yeah. therapist you can trust. Yeah, and obviously, uh, after what did you said you've done? What fifteen thousand? Was it fifteen hundred or fifteen thousand? Fifteen thousand. Yeah, fifteen thousand therapy sessions. Yes. I mean, I'm that's a bit quite of an a old bit. Black. Yeah, so that, <laughs> I've been that, around the block a few times. Yeah, that, that would say that that there's a, it's probably easier to trust someone that's talked to that many people and and healed that many people as well unintentionally. I, I would imagine it just happens. I bet, you know, so it, that, that's sometimes, a good thing. Yeah. But, it, you know, if this stuff didn't work, I wouldn't have been doing it for 28 years. I'd be I'd be a bus driver now or <laughs> whatever. Right. You know, this stuff works. And, and that, for me, is proof of the pudding in many respects as well. I mean, can we go just go back to that just to show, the again, the power of the subconscious? Um, 24 years ago, a lady came to me who had been given six months to live. And she had tumors growing on her liver. Um, oh, and she had a. Um, can, can we? Oh, I got to take a break. Can we? Can we pick up on this when we come back? Oh, absolutely. We're on our last break back, here. Yeah. Definitely yeah, want to sure. hear this story too. Also, when we come back, you'll be able to call in if you want to call and ask any questions about this uh, to our guest tonight, Steve Burgess at one 335 We'll pick up off this story where he's talking about with this patient. Stay with us. Listeners, this is Dave Cruz, host of Beyond the Strange Radio, asking you to join us live Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on The Fringe FM. Visit beyondstrange.com for links to chat, social media, and schedules of the show. And remember, always stay strange. Asta. This is Jason Lindgren from Crow 777 Radio. And you can hear us 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Saturday night here on The Fringe FM. 
Hey, this is Amalia from Know the Self Mystery School. I know that you are in the midst of massive change. We all are. This is the great turning, the time that we all decided to be here on the planet. Do you know why you came here to be a part of this crazy time? If not, I invite you to join my mystery school. I have a nine-week course called Activate Your Mission. And in this course, you're going to learn how to erect crystal clear boundaries so that you can hear that inner still voice that's going to guide your every move. Even if you're dealing with feeling weighed down by obligations and being enslaved to the system, this course is going to give you the tools you need to illuminate your shadow and awaken to your soul's mission. At the moment you sign up to the school, you are going to be greeted by not only a group of soulful spiritual lawyers, but you're also going to get some massive karmic clearings and you're going to feel the energy. It's palpable. I hope you'll join me in the school where together we're going to unlock your divine mission. Activate your mission by going to the fringe.fm forward slash soul mission and put in the code word fringe and receive $50 off today. You tune into this show at your own risk because it leads to a state of mind, not a perception it will be, but one that is. I'm Ryan Gable, and this is The Secret Teachings. The analysis offered on this show is objective, removed from the emotional hysteria of the hive mind collective mob of coercive persuasion, the polar divisions in politics and religion, and those that exist in the paranormal, occult, and even in health. By simple observation and common sense, one may decipher the news speak, double speak, and propaganda of ideological collectives intent on persuading the individual to abandon liberty through coercion and fear. On this show, we will speak to your heart and soul, opening a channel to spirit. And when you tune into this frequency, you are hearing the secret teachings. Five nights a week on The Fringe FM with a full archive at thesecretteachings.info. Have you ever wanted to dream about being a character in your favorite video game or movie? Would you like to dream your fantasy with all five senses in detail and remember everything? It's time to bring the dreaming mind back online. Introducing Dreaming for Gamers from Ian Wilson. Dreaming for Gamers will teach you how to program your dreams to dream what you want from any video game, movie, or source material that you choose. The courses help rehabilitate the dreaming mind out of atrophy so you can remember your dreams, taste, touch, smell, see, and hear, as well as be self-aware and take complete control over the dream state like Neo in the Matrix. You can't catch COVID in a dream, but you can wake up with a happy ending. Type in the fringe.fm forward slash dreamplay and sign up today to get dreaming now. That's the fringe.fm forward slash dreamplay or click the banner at the fringe.fm today and take the seven day dream challenge for free while it lasts. Get your palsy. Your palsy. New life. New life is scorching up your limbs, up your arms, up your legs. New life. New life. New life. Your head stopped shaking already, Baron. You can feel new life stealing up through your legs, <laughs> through your arms. This is the movie I was talking about. It's Black Magic with the Orson Welles. That's, that, US, that's what they titled it, Steve. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. steel. He's got, the, and it's a good. It's one of those old, good black and white films you can watch on YouTube or whatever. But uh, it's <laughs> it's in the public domain. Domain, but he's got, you know, uh, he's got a funny thing to watch, right? Because a lot of people think that about <laughs> hypnotherapists. But his eyes are so crazy, you know, and he's dressed up like a gypsy <laughs> in that movie. It's funny, man. <laughs> Um, Even I'm scared, and I'm a hypnotherapist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Orson Welles, yeah, he had a, a freaky nature about him. He's a good, good entertainer. Um, I guess, yeah, you guys can call in if you want. It's one eight hundred five eight eight zero three three five. If you have any questions for our guest, and uh, I guess another thing that kind of gets me about regression past life stuff is when you hear people talk about this. A lot of people are like, you know. I had a past life where I was an Egyptian king, or an, I'm like a queen, or I was the president, and and I was like, yeah, well, who's the janitor? How come nobody was that guy? Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. So ooh. this is one of the myths about it. People think that you know, there's there's always this myth that everybody's been famous in a past life. Having done thousands and thousands of re- past life regression sessions, they ain't. The vast majority of my clients have been just ordinary people, soldiers, sailors, bakers, peasants, 
um, shopkeepers, you know, in, in I would say 99% of cases. I have come upon people who have been very famous in past lives, uh, and I've written about them in my first book, Famous Past Lives, but um, it's very, very unusual. It really is. So it's one of the myths, and, and um, you know, we've all been, we've done everything over many lifetimes, of course, but... Um, it's very rare to have a famous past life. It really is. So, do you want to finish? Do you want me to finish the story off? Yes. I was just, uh, yes. Sorry, I had to ask so, that while I was on my mind. That's okay. That's all right. So, the the lady came. Um, she's in her uh, late thirties. She had uh, this liver disease called focal nodular hyperplasia, which is very rare. Uh, there's only 12 cases in the UK at any one time, and hers at that time was the most aggressive. Nobody survives this disease because tumours grow on the liver. They're not cancerous, but they actually grow to be the size of like melons and grapefruits. And um, she came to me, she was in pain all the time. She would look like a stick insect, she could hardly eat. She spent most of her time laying on a bed, just sick, uh, vomiting. Uh, she was doped up to the eyeballs on morphine and um, she was, the specialist has said, we, we guess you've got about six months to live, go on, write your will. Um, she had a young daughter, she obviously didn't want to die, she wanted to survive and um, she'd had an operation twice before uh, to try to help with the, um, the, the problem but both times it had been a complete disaster because she'd spent the whole operation vomiting and retching because she had to drink a dye down uh, before the operation so that the surgeon could see upon screen what was happening in the body um, so she came to me I thought okay I'll do my best we found that of course emotional causes there are always emotional causes to any physical problem because the liver is the seat of anger and uh, she had a lot of anger she had a tough childhood we found there were two past lives also that were causing the, the, the liver disease in one of the past lives she was a native american woman who had um, died in a raiding party on her village where uh, another native american brave came up behind her and stabbed her in the back in the liver of course in the liver area in the second past life, she was a young teenage boy, I think in Poland in the Second World War, and she was uh, bayoneted by the Nazis again in the back in the liver area. So, of course, she'd brought in this energy in the liver uh, in this life uh, of trauma. Um, so that was the cause. Those were the emotional causes. So we did a lot of regression work. We did a lot of visualizations. And what actually happened is the tumors stopped growing. And the surgeon was quite astonished. This had never happened before. Um, so he wanted to do the operation again for a third time, um, hoping that she's now strong enough for this to happen. And when she sat in front of me and said, the surgeon wants to do the operation again, the words came out of my mouth before I realized, we'll do the operation in hypnosis. Um, and the surgeon agreed to that. And so we did the whole operation with no anesthetic, uh, I was through, I was with her all the way in the operating theatre throughout the whole of the operation, the whole of the surgery. And whereas before the, the surgery had taken about na uh, one and a half to two and a half hours, in this case it only took 90 minutes. She wasn't sick once. Um, she was out of hospital two days later, whereas before she'd spent two and a half weeks in intensive care after the surgery. And oh at the end of the surgery, the surgeon just turned to me. He said, I, am, I have never seen anything like this in my life before. I am absolutely astonished. He said it was, it was like operating on a dead body. Um, he said it was just extraordinary. He said, give me your card. We must talk about this. I'll give you a call. Well, I'm still waiting for that telephone call 24 years later. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> but that lady is now 24 years past her die-by date. That's, uh, awesome. She That's freaking awesome, man even went on to have a young son um, some time later. So, you know, the mind is extraordinary. And if you can, and she was great in hypnosis. I was very lucky with that. She was fantastic in trance. Um, she had a great skill at it. But, um, you know, there's a Spanish surgeon, Dr. Escudero, who does all of his operations without any anesthetic. He's done about 10,000, in some cases, major operations. 
he doesn't even claim to use hypnosis. He just gets the client to use the power of the mind to tell the body it's going to be anesthetized. It's not going to feel anything. Well, it wasn't too long ago when we didn't have like propofol and all this other stuff. Like we didn't have anesthesia. According to history, uh, uh, relatively to history, it wasn't too long ago. So I would imagine a lot of people were were using stuff like that. I, I would. Anything. I don't want to it, feel that. <laughs> you know. It became very po- not popular, but in the 1800s, um, hypnosurgery was actually used by an English surgeon uh, working for the English Army in India um, on the soldiers, and uh, he came back from India and started to tell everybody in London about these operations with no anaesthetic. Nobody believed him, and then he demonstrated it, and everybody couldn't believe what they were seeing. This was developed by another, the, one of the, the father of modern day or early hypnosis. Um, and uh, he used to do demonstrations to surgeons of, again, surgery uh, without hypnosis. And this became very popular in the 1800s in, in the UK in London. And just as it was reaching its peak of popularity, they discovered uh, chloroform. And of oh. course, chloroform is the chemical which knocks people out. And it's easier for a surgeon to knock somebody out with a chemical than it is to teach them hypnosis and take somebody into trance. So what what got popular, of course, was the use of chloroform and chemicals. But uh, if that hadn't have happened, then I'm absolutely positive that hypnosurgery would would have been incredibly widely used in the English-speaking world. Wow, yeah, that's really, really cool to know, too. I kind of figured that. Now, as we go towards the last 15 minutes of the show, I, I think I'd like to get a little bit more, I guess I would say, fringier. But to these stories have been, this is fascinating. And I, I promise you guys, I'm going to do this stuff because right now I'm at the peak of like really wanting to know some past life stuff because of uh, going all the changes I'm going through, some of the people that I'm meeting in my life. Like that whole um, soul cluster thing you brought up earlier really makes <laughs> sense to me. And. <laughs> You know, just to recap a little bit, you talked about a 13-year-old boy who got his migraines cured, went through just past life after past life. We talked about uh, a Viking warrior that ended up with an obsession uh, that you cured. Um, and I, I can say cure, but now, now that I think about that, when I say that, have you ever had anybody in the medical industry come at you and ask you to stop or say, stop telling people this cures these things or anything like that? No, no, not at all. Um, I mean, it's viewed with skepticism by the the medics, of it's course. Harmless, but I, right? I mean, it's harmless. I mean, I've had doctors on my training courses. I've I've had doctors as clients. I've had doctors' wives as clients. I've had referrals from GPs uh, in the UK regularly. Uh, so doctors who know me and trust me are, are quite happy with that because they know that there are big limits to what they're doing. And of course, modern medicine is really nowadays about prescribing medication and pharmaceuticals than anything else um, whereas this is, is quite different and of course if a person doesn't respond or is made worse by the medication then the doctor has got nowhere else to go whereas this stuff working with the mind we can we can do all sorts of things you can heal so many incredible things um, so no right. you know right. the, the doctors tend to view it as a scans they're not happy with it because they're trained with this scientific model but um, you know, this is another way of working. And when they see it, when they start to understand it, a lot of doctors use hypnosis, actually. They or recommend are it, too, I think. My doctor did. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, they just do the basic stuff, which is fine and very helpful. But when it comes to regression, they're, they're obviously a little bit more skeptical about it because they haven't seen it. If they were to see it, they'd be less skeptical. I, I've, I want to ask you a question, too, about the, um, the hypnosis side of this. So, not been to a comedy club a few times and i've seen these on youtube videos as well where they have these stage hypnotists that i think honestly it's a it's a gag and a goof but i think it could couldn't that give people like you a little bit of a bad name as well as like i wonder what type if that's really traumatizing people sometimes when they you know you take somebody on stage say you took a girl out on a date who already has a little bit of social anxiety number one but it's susceptible to hypnosis and then have her up there clucking like a chicken in front of everybody. And then she sees yeah. it later. I wonder if that, you know, I mean, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You, right? you've, m- most hypnotherapists uh, find stage hypnosis leaves a bad taste in the mouth. And uh, there are dangers to stage hypnosis. Now, most stage hypnotists don't even know this because they go and do a basic 
training course for a day or so in stage hypnosis and then think they can hypnotize everybody to do stupid things. I mean, a hypnotherapist, we don't like stage hypnosis because on one level, we're trying to help people to get better and all that does is it just takes the mickey out of people, makes them look stupid. On the one level, however, it does show people the power of the mind and the power of hypnosis because if you know somebody who goes up on stage and does the silly things um, and you think, well, he would never be like that, he would never usually do that, so something quite spectacular has happened. But there are dangers to stage hypnosis and you're quite right, you take somebody up on stage who has a problem, then there's a possibility that they, that problem can be accentuated because it can start to leak through both in the hypnosis and afterwards. And there have certainly been cases, I mean, there's a campaign against stage hypnosis in the UK, which was set up in the, I think, the early 90s by the family of a young woman who died, in my opinion, because of a stage show. And um, the, it, it was taken to court and, and actually, surprisingly enough, it actually lost. Uh, everybody thought it was going to win the case. But to prove that the stage hypnotist had killed her is very difficult. Even Paul McKenna, I mean, the world's most famous hypnotist, um, he was taken to court and by a man who I think he accused him of creating accidentally. This man had schizophrenia or something afterwards. And again, McKenna, it was he was taken to court and he won the case. He, he wasn't, it, they weren't able to prove it. But uh, there are dangers, and um, you know, I, I, it's it's a bit scary the way that these people gung ho just bang people into trance and get them to do stupid things, because you're working with the human mind, and the human mind, in one level, as we said earlier, can be very fragile. You have to be extremely careful. So most hypnotherapists don't like stage hypnosis. And uh, personally, if it was me, I'd rather see it banned. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank you for answering that because that uh, has me tripped up a little bit. I mean, I'm not going to say I haven't laughed when I watched it, but... No, it's just funny. It can be extremely yeah. funny. I mean, I've got, you know, one of my friends um, is, a, is possibly the, the, the best stage hypnotist in the world. I mean, yeah. he's hypnotized thousands tens of thousands of people very funny man and it is funny but you often find that there's a bullying aspect to mm -hmm. stage hypnosis a lot of the stage hypnotists are bullies um, and in some cases egos as well because you know they're in charge and they're in control of these poor saps who are doing the silly stuff on stage um, but it really does leave a bad taste in the mouth um okay so uh, my next question i believe uh is uh, and I I want to try to say this delicately because I don't want to make you think I'm assuming anything. But I've also watched some um, regressions before, and people swear by these some of these regressions, especially the ones that do like alien and abduction stuff like that. But I, I mm. noticed there's like a prompting and a leading where they're kind of leading them to say a few things, and if you're yeah. smart enough, you can see it, or if you're aware of it. Yes. I don't want to say smart enough; that's bad. You're aware of it, right? Um, yeah. Is that yeah. necessary? Do you do that at all, or just, no, just... It, 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 for me? It's criminal. Okay, <laughs> Absolutely good. criminal. Um, you find that there are some therapists who will lead clients and implant stuff, and certainly in alien abduction regressions, that can be a total disaster. Um, so. Uh, yeah, you've got to use what we call clean language. It has to come from the client. You have to ask open questions um, because otherwise if you're leading the client, you can implant stuff and create stuff in the mind which then they take on board and believe is real. But if, um, if it's done correctly, it can be startling. Um, I was very fortunate. I've done quite a bit of alien abduction regression over the years. Um, and one of the... Um, best experiences I had. I was actually asked by Sky to take part in a documentary called The Real 4400, which is actually still on YouTube now, um, where um, I was asked to uh, regress a lady who her and her family felt that had some form of alien abduction experience. And what had happened is this, this lady was in her early 40s, I think. She had two young sons both I think they were aged about 10 and 11 and her mom um, and they all went for lunch one day in the UK and as they drove back home in the car a spacecraft came down right alongside the car uh, 
yeah. and started shining lights into the car. And they all felt this incredible feeling of euphoria. And then suddenly this spacecraft just shot off and disappeared from view in, the, in a, like a millisecond. And they all felt great sadness because, the, you know, it was an incredible experience. And so all the way home, they were talking about what they'd seen and how incredible it was. But when they arrived home, they found that the journey home, which should have taken 20 minutes, had taken an hour and 20 minutes. Wow. And they had an hour of missing time. And they all felt that something more had happened. Um, the boys started to get nightmares and, and anxieties. They were all very upset because they couldn't get a sense of it. They couldn't get a handle on it. Uh, there were other sightings in their area of a UFO uh, by other people. Um, but uh, the, the producer of the program asked me if I would regress the lady, the mom of the two boys. And uh, so I went to the home. And again, using clean language, I guided her back to uh, what happened. And actually what actually happened, Joe, is that the whole car was taken up into the spacecraft off the road. Oh they were God. then taken out of the uh, car and they couldn't see the beings that were in the, the spaceship. Uh, but they, they, the beings were on the other side of a, of a panel. They, they kept them hidden, kept themselves hidden. But they were communicating telepathically. And then there were these lights, or she said there were orbs, like lights, which started to scan them, which were moving up and down around them, floating around and scanning them in some ways, as if they were scanning for some form of information. Um, and as the lady was remembering this re-experiencing in, in the trance session, all this is filmed, um, you know, filmed live. Um, as she was re-experiencing this, she, she was a big smile on her face. She had this incredible feeling of love. Um, and then suddenly she started to cry into panic because the light started to get close to the boys. And she said, no, not the boys, not the boys, not the boys. And then suddenly she relaxed again and she said, oh, no, they're telling me it's okay. They're telling me they're not going to hurt us. They're just checking things out. It's quite okay. Wow. And she relaxed. This went on for some time. They were then put back into the car. The car was lowered back onto the road and then they carried on driving on the road and then the spacecraft shot off. So, That's um, you know, in, this was wonderful for her because she had then verification that something had happened um, and it all started to make sense for them so they could let go of the anxieties. And, you know, people could say, oh, but sceptical, well, that's, you know, that's ridiculous. They may be all made it up. They were imagining that. Why did they imagine it? <laughs> Why did this family of ordinary, normal people, these were not weirdos, these yeah, it's were not... like they were making millions bones. off of it. They got exactly. their reputation on the line, too, you know, so... It's... That's it. Why would they do that? Why would they come out and face other people's hostility over this? They were not profiting in any way. And they were not lunatics. They were normal, lovely people functioning in the world. So for me, when people say, was that real? Yes, I truly believe they had an abduction experience. And also in the session, in the re regression session, there were signs that I looked for um, that, that should tell me whether it's real or not. And it was real. So, you know, a lot of these cases, and I, I think... I, there's a, I think there's an Australian hypnotherapist who's done a lot of work on uh, with people who are uh, abduction survivors. And she said, they're all normal people. They're all yeah. functioning in the world. They're not oddballs. They have no reason to claim these things. Um, and so these things are very, very real. So I think the abduction experience stuff uh -huh. is actually a very real phenomenon. Now, we only got a couple of minutes left, and I really want to ask uh, just a couple of questions real quick questions with some real if you can just give me some real quick answers here um and uh i'm not trying to rush you it's just only got a couple of minutes left so how many past lives do you think that based on all of your work how many past lives do we live is it in the hundreds I, is it more i think we've i think it's thousands the tibetan buddhism says it's countless lives over countless aeons of existence but of course we also have lives on other planets we also have past lives as animals as insects so i think it's many thousands yeah, that was the next question I was going to ask you, actually, you know, um, I, because I wonder about that, because I was talking the other night about Joe Rogan saying that he uh, and this, he had a dream about that he was uh, 
a, a wolf and he could smell the fear of his prey, you know, as he was hunting down his prey and things like that. Um, yeah. Do you yeah, find I've done quite uh, a few sessions with clients with animals? Occasionally, it doesn't happen very often. We once usually once we've attained a human form, we don't usually get reborn as animals. But occasionally it happens, and I've quite a few clients as, as past lives as animals. Um, it occasionally happens. Difficult to prove it or not, of course. It could be imaginary, but it still gets them better. Can you just give me an example of like one? Uh, yeah, I had a client who was a cat in a Greek temple. I believe that. Rooching around looking for mice. I had another client who was a rat who got run over by a, 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 a car. Uh, another client was a donkey in a past life. and uh, Oh, sorry, a camel. She was a pole. She was in a camel pound with all these other camels. She said, the smell is disgusting. It was horrible. All these other smelly camels. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I had to ask some really fringy questions there, too, because we like to get into that, too, as well, you know. And um, so, yeah, so Famous Past Lives, this is one of your books published by Books, and also The Power of Past Life Regression, which is published by six books. There's an audio book, The Power of Past Life Regression, and the website is lionheart-training.com and hypnoblogpod.wordpress.com. Do you also have a free hypnotherapy recording on YouTube? Which at uh, your YouTube channel is Hypno for All, and do you have a Facebook and Twitter at all? Yeah, or... face, the Facebook is called The Power of Past Life Regression. That's after the book, uh, the book name. So I've got a lot of stories on there, stuff about past lives. So The Power of Past Life Regression is a Facebook page. Yeah, people are very welcome to check out that. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to be in touch with you for sure to get a session and. Uh, you know, for coming on, waking up early with us and having your coffee while we're here in the late night across the pond, it, it does mean a lot exactly. to us. So thank you so much oh, for coming it's on. It's been a real pleasure. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you, Joe. You've asked some great questions as well, by the way, Joe. You've been really good questions. That's super. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And thank you for coming on. And guys, I'm going to put all of those links in there. I've been on his website tonight, too. You need to go check that stuff out. There's fantastic resources on there. And I'm incredibly impressed by the power of this, too. Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to have David Whitehead on, uh, dwtruthwarrior.com. He'll be here tomorrow night. Same time, same channel. I want to thank my producer, Pancho, for making all this happen, as well as the patrons and the donors who make this show happen as well. And uh, all you guys in the Fringe FM chat, please don't copy the show without written permission. The music was by Chronox and Steezy Stevie, and also Carbon Based Life Forms. We'll be back tomorrow night. Stay tuned for The Secret Teachings with Ryan Gable. Good night, guys.